It says, mm -hmm. it says found that the angle of incidence is double the angle of refraction within the Three prism. Times R. Mm -hmm. What is the angle of the prism? prism? So, so what is the refracting angle or angle of the prism? All right, so if this is the question, then we are looking for the angle of the prism, but there's one thing that we know, and that is at minimum deviation, a minimum deviation, Refractive index mu or mu is equal to sine of m plus e all on two all on sine on e over two. Is that correct? Is the formula right? Yes, please. So where, where I equals plus E over two and R is equal to E on two. Now we are told that at minimum deviation, at minimum deviation, uh, I is equal to uh, two R. I is equal to two R. So if at minimum deviation, I is equal to two R, then we can say that then mu is equal to sine i over sine r okay so either we express i as this at minimum deviation uh, and r as this at minimum deviation but at at minimum i is equal to two r and so mu is equal to sine of two r over sign are at minimum deviation. All right. Or you can also go this way. Okay, since at minimum deviation, this is equal to two I minus A, Okay, all right, so when you when you go this way, when you go this way, you will still come back to, make, make I the subject, you will still come back to getting this, what we have here. So this is still ideal. All right. Now, it isn't right that if you if you cancel this and this, you are wrong, because don't forget this is an angle. It is an angle i, i is equal to two r. So you cannot cancel r and this r because it isn't algebra where two r is multiplying sign. It's a trig function. 2R is an angle, so it cannot cancel. So whoever is thinking of cancellation, I'm sorry, you can't cancel. The best you can do is, this is the sign of a double angle. Okay, what are you doing? Double angle. That is a sign of double angle. It's like sine of R plus R. 
So you must expand this. Have an identity to represent this. What's the identity? If I have sine of A plus B, the expansion of this compound angle is that this is equal to sine A times cos B plus cos of A times sine B. So this is the expansion of this compound angle. Okay. Meaning if I have R plus R, this time it's addition of same angle. So it's double angle. This is compound. I can use this rule to expand the same thing. So this will be sine of R times cos of R plus cos of R times sine of R. Have you what are you doing? Yes. And sine 2R is equal to this is sine R cos R cos R sine R. This is commutativity. So I can bring sine R. So this is the same as this. Therefore, sine 2R is equal to 2 times sine R cos R. R. Okay, so this is where it comes from. Okay. So in place of sine 2 R, I can substitute this. Therefore, I have the refractive in this equal to 2 times sine R. Time. Oh, shit. <clears throat> My hello, my earpiece today is you hear me. Yes, me. All right, it'll be on and on and no. All right. Okay, so two sine two sine r times cos r divided by sine r. Now you can cancel because what you have at the numerator is two times sine r times cos r. So this can now cancel this. So we have mu is equal to 2 cos of r. Mu was given as root 2. So root of 2 over 2 is equal to cos r. Therefore, r is equal to the cos inverse of inverse of root of 2 on 2. And this is 45 degree. So if R is 45 degree and being told that I is 2 times R, then we have 2 times 45 degrees, which is equal to 90 degree. That is the solution for the first one. Okay, are you are you okay? Are you are you fine? Yes. All right. Okay, are you okay? Oh yeah, I'm cool. No, I got it connected. Pardon? Okay, are you fine? No, please. Where? Oh, your line is breaking. Okay, your line is breaking. If you could hear me, just send 
send where your question is for me. All right, then the first question. Okay, this is the identity. This is the identity. If you have any two different angles, if you have any two different angles, okay, A and B, expansion of these two different angles is equal to taking the sine of one of them times the cosine of the other plus then the switch cosine of cos this cos to b so this time the cos will take a cos of a times sine of sine of b please i'm coming in i'm coming let me pick Okay, so if you have any two different angles, it can be so this can an application of this can be sine of if you have 45 degrees plus 30. I can expand this to be sine 45 times cos 30 plus cos of 45 degree times cos of have sine of 30. This is the application of it. Now, if this is what we call for compound angles. Compound because it isn't just a single angle. These are summation of two different angles. But we also have for double angle. Double angles. And this is double twice. So for double angles, we are looking at same angle, but multiply by two. So example, if I have sine of two times theta, don't forget this is, okay, this is double twice this angle theta, which I can also express as sine theta plus another theta. So the expansion of this, uses the same um, method as the compound angle, okay? So sine of the first angle, sine theta times cos of the second angle, the same angle, okay? Plus, when you finish, cos of the first angle, theta, times the sine of the second angle, which is the same angle, theta. So you realize that this, this is the same as what is here. You got multi, uh, multiplication is commutative. So if multiplication is commutative, then you have two times sine theta times cos theta. Meaning if I have sine of two theta, the expansion is equal to this, okay? Cosine also has its own uh, application, but this is for sine. So that is what we are applying here. Please, I, are you okay, class? Are you okay? Yes, please. Okay. Then the second question, which... As for this, a lot of you were able to solve it. Now the second question, that is even the easiest, so yet a lot of you were flawed. Um, Josephine, read the question for us. A ray of light falls on a glass plate of refractive index 1.5. So the refractive index of the glass plate, we are told is 1.5. Uh -huh. 
what is the angle of incidence of the ray? If the angle between the reflected and the refracted rays is 90 degrees. So look at it. There's a glass plate. A ray of light incidence. And then this is this is the normal. So I we don't know. Now whenever a ray incident from air to glass. Part of the incident ray, so there will be deviation towards the normal. This then becomes the angle of refraction. Then part of the incident light is also reflected. So this is the angle of uh, the refracted reflected ray. Now we are told the angle between the refracted and then the refracted. This angle we are told is 90. Okay. Find the angle of incidence. Okay. Find the angle of incidence. Please, what is the relationship between the incidence ray and then the refract uh, the angle of incidence and the angle of refraction? What is the relationship? Adwa. Asante, what is the relationship between the angle of incidence and then the angle of reflection? Hey, Adwa. Adwa, can you hear me? Josephine. Yes, they are the same. They are the same. So if I, I, angle of incidence is represented by I, then the angle of re re reflection is also I. Theta, theta. Right? So it therefore means that if this is 90, then it means this plus this must also be 90. I plus R must also be equal to 90 degrees. So that this and this would add up to this to be 180. So if this is 90, then I plus R must also be equal to 90 degrees. Is that point understood? Is that point understood? Yes, please. All right. So what then will be R? R therefore is equal to 90 degree minus I. This, the angle of refraction is equal to 90 degree minus I. Because look at it. If I add I plus this 90 plus the angle of refraction, which is 90 minus I, this and this cancels out and I have 180. So it means that our angle of refraction will be equal to 90 minus I. 
Now, the refractiveness mu is equal to sine of I over sine of R. This is 1.5 is equal to sine I over sine of 90 minus I. I hope you are following. Yes, okay. Then, what is sine? Sine 90 minus I. If I have a right angle triangle, this is 90, and this is I, then if this is 90 and this is I, then this angle would also be 90 minus I. This angle must also be 90 minus I because once this is 90, then this plus this must give me 90. So if this is I, then this angle will be 90 minus I. Example, if this is 60, uh, 30 degrees, this side will be uh, uh, 60. All right. So if the opposite side is A, B, and C. If you take sine of I, sine I is equal to A over C. When you take cos of 90 minus I, cos 90 minus I, would also be equal to A over C sine I, which is A over C. When you take the cosine of 90 minus I, cos 90 minus adjacent over hypotenuse. So we realize that sine I is equal to cos of 90 minus i. Therefore, we can also, let's find the other one too, cos i. Let's take cos i from here. Cos i will be b over c. b over c. Then let's also find sine of 90 minus i. Yes, what is sine 90 minus i from the diagram? Sine 90 minus i. Please, if you have seen it, just share it with us. What is sine 90 minus i, anybody? Oh, that is B on C. So the conclusion is that cos I is equal to sine 90 minus I and sine I is also equal to cos 90. So look at if I have sine 90 minus I because this is equal to this in place of sine 90 minus sine 90 minus i i can input cos i so i can therefore draw the conclusion that okay then sine i over cos i which is equal to 1.5 this is equal to tan i. Therefore, i is equal to the tan inverse of 
1.5. And that must be 56 point something. Please check it out for me. What's the time inverse of 1.5? So that's the answer. That's the angle of incidence. That's the angle of incidence. If you have any question, ask. Do you have any question? Concerning what you've done so far, any any one of you. If you don't have any questions, then it means you are okay. Okay, all right. A question to the house. I'm sending a question to the house to draw. So it's not so that you must you must think through it, be able to apply this thinking to solve it. Okay, so I've dropped a question in the group. Please check for me. Please, have you have you seen the question? Please, you are taking it. Let me get feedback from the rest of you. Have you seen the question? Yes. Yes. Okay, so I'm giving you seven minutes to see what you can produce from this question. Your time starts now, and it's 740 by my watch. Seven minutes. Seven minutes. Andre, I just dropped a, a question in the group. Okay. Yes, please. Hey, think through it. Let's see what you can do within seven minutes. Okay. So I'll be back after the seven minutes. I'm attending to somebody, so please just look through. We'll solve it together afterwards. So try. The angle of incidence of a ray of light striking an equilateral triangular prism A, B, C of refraction angle 60 degrees is 40. So we are talking about triangular prism equilateral triangular prism the angle refraction angle of the prism 60 And we are told that the angle of incidence is 40.
40 degrees. Calculate I, the angle of refraction at the first phase. So A, B, C. And we know that a triangular pregnant has two refracting planes, A, C, and then A, B. So from air to glass, so it will deviate towards the normal. Another normal here means that it would also deviate away from the normal. So when we join these two, when we join the two normal and two, we'll have We will have this. And the question is that we find the angle of refraction at the first plane. So calculate I, the angle of refraction at the first phase, then I, I, the angle of emergence. I, I, I. If the light is incident normally on the first phase AB, determine the angle of emergence. Then B, the angle of deviation. Comes in. Can you hear me? Yes. Please, I think one other thing I actually forgot to give to the class is the refractive index. We were given the refractive index of the glass to be 1.5. Sorry, I didn't give you that. You were given. Okay, so the refractive index of the glass is this. So. To find R1, using Snell's law, the refractive index, which is sine of, sine of I, the ratio of the sine of R to the sine of R1. So R1 is what you are to calculate for. So 1.5 on sine of 40, over sine of R1. Therefore, sine R1 equals sine 40 on 1.5. So, what did you make for R1? What did you make for R1? Hello. What did you what did you get for R1? Josephine. Oh yeah, were you able to solve it? Or oh, because I didn't give you um the refractive evidence, you couldn't. Yeah. So R1 is 25. Oh, instead, so. 0.4 degree. Then I I the angle of emergence. The angle of emergence is this angle. The angle of emergence. So if you take it from even glass to air, R1 becomes, R2 becomes the angle of incidence and E becomes the angle of refraction or emergence. So if you are taking it from glass to air, then 
1 over the refractive index of glass reversed would be equal to sine R2 over sine E. But you have no idea of what R2 is. But you can determine R2 using A is equal to R1 plus R2. Okay, so if R1 is this, 25.4, and A is 60, then R2 is equal to 60 minus R1, which is 60 minus 25.4. Yeah, right. what is 60? Minus 25.4. The answer is. That's 4 point six. Again. Therapy, that's 4 point six. Okay, so 34.6 degree. is R2. Okay. Therefore, therefore, the um sign of E, we are looking for the angle of emergence. So sign of E is equal to N times sine of R2. The absolute refractiveness is 1.5 times sine of 54, uh, sorry, 34.6. So multiply this for me, then we take the sine inverse. Multiply 1.5 by sine 34.6. So please, the answer is 0 0.8518. 0 0.8518. Therefore, E is equal to the sine inverse of 0 0.8518. Yes, what's the sine inverse of that? 58.4042. Okay, so 58.4. In fact, the easiest approach it's also when I when I reverse it, when I reverse the part of the light, okay, from air to glass, then I can also say that the absolute refractiveness is equal to sine of E over sine of R2. Don't forget I have R2. E is 1.5. 1.5 is equal to sine of E over sine of R2. R2 is 34.6. So when you when you make sine of E, if you find E, you get the same value as this. So that is another easiest approach instead of going this way. Both methods would give you the same results. Okay. Then, I, 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 if the light is incident normally on the first phase, A, B, determine, determine the angle of emergence and B, the angle of deviation. Okay, so this time I think they represented this vertex with A, B, and then C. Can I claim this? What if 
what we've calculated for so far. So this is what they are saying. They are supposing the light hits A, B, C. Still the same plane, our prism 60. But if the light incident on the face normally, this is the normal, meaning the angle of incidence is along the same path as the normal. If this is the situation, remember that I told you when light incidence on the plane normally, it is not deviated. Each path never deviates. So long as it is incidenting on the plane at an angle of 90. So if this is the case, it will only deviate when it hits BC because it is not hitting BC at 90, it will deviate. And the deviation will be away from the normal. You go from glass to air. So this becomes the angle of emergence. Under this condition, angle of incidence I is zero. R1 would also be zero because there is no deviation. Therefore, using A is equal to R1 plus R2, R2 is equal to A. R2 is equal to A, which is equal to 60, 60 degrees. Okay, now to find the angle of emergence, to find the angle of emergence in this case, how do we, how then do we find the angle of emergence in this case? If we are going by Snell's law, sine the absolute refractiveness is equal to sine of E over sine of this R2. R2, the absolute refractiveness of the glass is 1.5. Sine E, E is what we are looking for under this condition, divided by R2, which is 60, sine of 60. Therefore, please complete it for me. When you make sine E the subject, you have 1.5 times sine 60. What is E? Yes, determine E for me. Determine the value of E for me. Yes, what's the value of E under this condition? Are you there? I'm waiting for your feedback. No, I'm there, but I'm getting my turn. Okay, so under this condition, E will be 90. The reason is that, you see, the moment the angle of, the moment the angle of incidence in the dense medium is greater than the critical angle, I is greater than the critical angle, total internal reflection would occur. Okay, so when total internal reflection occurs, the angle of incidence, um, the angle of refraction is 90. So I told you the critical angle of this is 42, around 42 point something. So the moment you incident light, and it is greater than this angle. You have 
the angle of refraction giving you 90. That's the condition for total internal reflection to occur. So, so the angle of emergence will just be that minimum angle of emergence for this it will be 90. So E, the minimum value of um E, or the yes, the maximum value of E will be 90 under this condition because I is greater than the critical angle of the material. Please, is that okay? Yes, sir. Then the last question. The last question is that B, the angle of deviation, the angle of deviation The angle of deviation within for for triangular prism for triangular prism the total deviation at a a b and b c is equal to i plus e minus a The total deviation within a triangular prism is given by I plus E minus A. So if I, if I is zero, it's still under this condition. If I is zero and the angle of emergence is 90, then the angle of the prism is 60 then the total deviation will be equal to 30 degrees. So that's the end of the show. That's the end of the show. Please, any, any question? I'm sending you a last one last example to solve. One last example to try and we move on to lenses. So let's go through the question. At what angle, at what angle should a ray of light be incident on the face of a prism of refracting angle 60? So that it just suffers total internal reflection at the other phase. Refractive index of the material of the prism is root of two. At what angle should a ray of light be incident on the face of a prism of refracting angle 60 degrees so that it just suffers total internal reflection at the other phase. The refractive index of the material of the prism is root two. So another six minutes to see what you can do. Start work. So here it's talking about, we are looking for that angle of incidence, which will cause total internal reflection at the other side. So it means that this side must have an angle of refraction of 90 for total internal reflection to occur. The angle of refraction must be 90. So this side would, must, would have an angle of emergence of 90 degrees. So what will be that angle of incidence which will produce an angle of emergence or refraction of 90? So please think through for 
six minutes and I'll come back to you. There is price at stake here. Whoever gets this correct wins an instant airtime of 20 CDs. Whoever gets it right wins an instant airtime of 20 CDs. So work hard within the seven minutes. So the competition is between Adua Sante, Equia, Adoma, Equia Boatima, Andri, uh, Doing Pua, Jared, Inshira, Janice, Josephine. Ah, Canada, you are joining twice. Oh, Gerard has come home. Daniel. Do not miss an Oye. So there is price at stake. Whoever gets it right, you have a hint. An airtime of 26. Time is up. Has any of you been able to finish? Yes, sir. Uh, eh? We stayed here. <laughs> Andre. We stayed here. Andre. Please. Mr. Jia, yeah, please. Mr. Jia, yeah, please, please hold on. Mr. Jia. Uh, Hello. No, Mr. Jia, Mr. Jia, yeah, please, I caught first. Please dance out 21.5. Come again. 21.5 degrees. Mr. Jia, yeah, 21.47 degrees. How? Mr. Jia, yeah, I can explain. So let me Mr. pick. Yeah, let me explain. Let me pick answers individually. And Andre, you had twenty one point four seven degrees. Four seven. And Gerard, twenty one point five. Approximately twenty one point five. Adua, mm, please, I'm not done. Equia, um, studio, please, fifty four point seven four degrees. Equia, what man? Uh, okay, and uh, uh, don't you are? Yeah, please, I had my zero. Okay. Inshira, did you finish? Just fin. Yes, I had 21.47. How? Can I? Yeah. Approximately twenty one point five. Hmm. 
Ah, ça bon. Demarais. Oye. Is a hard part of Okay, then, Josephine, is that, what did you get? 21.47. Okay. The answer, anyway, let's solve it. Let's solve it. Because the answers you are calling for me, I'm not so convinced. So, we are looking for that angle of incidence, that minimum angle of incidence, which will cause total internal reflection. That eye is unknown. But for Total internal reflection to occur. If I here R2 is greater than the critical angle of the material, we'll have total internal reflection occurring. Now, when R2 is equal to C, we have the angle of reflection. The angle of refraction being 90. Okay. So this, when we are able to determine R2, which is C, then we find that corresponding I, which will give us this angle. So, our, our, our main problem is determining C. Two ways to look at it. This angle plus this angle must be equal to, this angle plus this angle must be equal to what? Hello. This plus this must be equal to 180 degrees. 180. Because this plus this is also 180. So that the angles within the quadrilateral sums up to 360. So if this is 60, then this must be 120. Okay. And we are giving the refractive index of the prism to be root 2. So if this is 60, then the absolute refractiveness can be sine of 90 over sine of C. And this is known. This is known one on sine C. Therefore sine C is equal to one on root two. And C therefore will be equal to 45 degree. So the critical angle is equal to 45 degree. If the critical angle is 45 degree, then R1 will be equal to 180 minus 120 plus 45. And we are talking about 165. What is 180 minus 165? This is 15. So if R1 is 15, then using the same concept of absolute refractiveness, root two would also be equal to sine i on sine of 15. 
Therefore, sine i is equal to root 2 times sine of 15. What then is i? 21.47 degrees. What? 21.47 degrees. <laughs> In fact, nobody got it right. Yes. Nobody got it. Hey, man, four of you got it. Eh, <laughs> uh, sir, 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 I'm waiting for your time. Okay, this. Yes, so send me hi. Send me hi, okay? <laughs> and then let me, okay. let me have your contacts. Those of you who got I know four of you. Henry had it. Uh, uh, <laughs> Joseph had it. <laughs> Uh, hey, Gerard hey. and Gerard hey. and Kenneth, <laughs> send me hi, and then let me know your um your phone numbers to send the airtime on. Okay, but, sir. You Thank know, you. in fact, I later realized that I gave you the clue. If I had <laughs> kept, if I had kept quiet here, <laughs> it, would, it would have caused a lot of problems. <laughs> <laughs> but that's still uh, okay. So sir, send me a hi. Let me know your contact for 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 the redemption of the prize. <laughs> okay, so lenses. But then before I talk about lenses, before I please the rest of you, I mean, have you understood how to solve the problem? Yes, sir. All right. I mean, those of you who did not get it. Adwa, are you okay now, Inshira? Yes, please. Okay. <laughs> it's a very fun. Uh, Abia Guatima, are you there? Now, let me draw your attention to one theory, theory a very theoretical application. The, the amount of deviation. You see, earlier we we're saying that um, the triangular prism is used to create dispersion of lights separation of white light into components. And so if there's another normal, the ray gets deviated here. So you realize that the original part of the incident ray is this, but it's part is deviated, and this is the emergent ray. So this spectrum, this spectrum is how the ray has been stretched over this, okay, spectrum with regards to different wavelengths of light. So white light here, but when it is coming out of the prism, it is stretched into various components, red, orange, yellow, green, indigo, okay? So blue, indigo, violet, okay? So the white in incident light is now stretched and then separated into various components, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. So you realize that red light is the least deviated. Red is the least deviated. And violet is the most deviated. So you you realize that 
the deviation of light depends on the following factors. One, the refractive index of the material used as the prism. The refractive index of the material. Meaning that when the light, white light is being passed through glass, the extent to which it will be deviated will be different from when this prism is made of plastic. So the, the extent of deviation in the material depends on, well, instead of saying the refractive index, it's also okay to say that the nature of the material used as a prism. The nature of the material used as a prism. Two, it also depends on the angle of incidence, angle of incidence. Don't forget deviation is equal to I plus E minus A, I informs E. Then it also depends on the refracting angle of the prism, three. It also depends on the refracting angle or refracting angle of the prism or the angle of the prism, either refracting angle or angle of the prism. Then, finally, it also depends on the wavelength of the incident light. Wavelength of the incident light. Here we mean that Different colors of light are deviated differently. So white light is deviated and then is stretched into spectrum. But if this isn't white light, but blue, red, yellow, because different colors have different wavelengths, the extent to which the light will be deviated would also be different. So don't forget, I said, it depends on the wavelength of the incident light and different colors have different wavelengths. And so the deviation within the prism would also be different, okay? So these are the factors that determines the extent of deviation, okay? refractiveness of the material or the nature of the material used as a prism, angle of incidence, refracting angle of the prism, and then the wavelength of the incident light. I want you to research on the wavelength of red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. Give me the wavelength of these lights. They are these colors of light. And that would tell us whether when red light is incidented here, it would be different from when orange, yellow, or okay. So your research on this, the wavelength of these lights, give me their wavelengths. Then we apply it in our next meeting. So our next area to look at is lenses. Lenses. Lenses.
What is a lens? What is a lens? Any idea of what a lens is? Anybody? Okay, so a lens is a transparent glass that deviates the path of light. So a lens is a transparent glass that refracts light. A lens is such that it can be thinner or thicker at the middle. Okay, a lens can either be thinner or thicker at the middle. at the middle. Let's talk about the types before we look at the uses. So types of lenses. We have what we call one, by we are by convex lines. We also have by concave then we have plano convex or plano concave lines. Then we have also divergent, converging, okay, convex or concave meniscus. Concave, convex or concave meniscus. What is biconvex? What is biconvex? I said lens lenses divert or refract the path of light. Okay. So convex lens, let's talk generally about what convex lens is. So we have convex lens or, or converging lines. A convex lens is such that it is, it is thicker 
in the middle, but thinner at the edges. So this lens is such that This lens is such that this is the center. If you look at the thickness from the center O, this part is thicker. Whereas at the edges, it is thinner. So a convex lens is thicker at the middle and then thinner at the edges. So thicker at the middle and then at the edges. At the edges, it is thinner. The thickness is very, very small. Now, this is this kind of lens is known as bi convex because there are two refracting planes. Light, when you incident it here at both sides, can be deviated. So there are two refracting surfaces. It can be deviated, light can be deviated here and at the other end. So all the mirrors, uh, sorry, the lenses with two refracting surfaces are known as bi, bi, bi convex. If the lens only has one refracting surface, then we are looking at a flat surface, one sided flat surface. And there is a curvature at the other end. So this is where light must be incidented. We are only incidenting light at the curved surfaces. So because this has only one curved plane and the other side is flat, this kind of mirror, uh, lens is termed as plano, plano convex. So in the plano plano lenses, we are talking about only one refracting surface. If there are two curved, curved surfaces, we have bi. So this is bi convex. This is plano convex. Please, are we okay? Are we okay? Yes, sir. Then by con um concave by concave concave lenses okay have features which is opposite to this one here for convex lenses thicker at the middle and thinner at the edges. For concave lenses, the lens is such that it is thicker at the outer ends and thinner at the middle. So for bi, this is how it looks like. For bi, bi concave. The lens is thicker at the edges so over here these are thinner then at the edges 
when you feel it, take her at the outer ends or edges. So it's the opposite of this. For convex lines, thicker at the middle, thinner at the edges. For concave lines, thinner at the middle, thicker at the edges. So because this one also has two refracting surfaces, this end and then this end. This is known as biconcave. Biconcave. So a biconcave lens has two refracting surfaces. Plano concave lens. The plano plano refers to single curved sides. So the other side is flat. One side is flat. So the arrow points to where there could be refraction. So we only have one end which is curved. Okay, so this is this is a plano plano concave. Plano concave. All right. So you we we end it here and then continue our meeting. Okay. Next time. I think we 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 have about five minutes to end. So let's end our show here. If you have any question, ask. If you don't have any question, then good night to all of you. Good night, we'll sir. Con we'll continue another time. Bye-bye to all of you. Bye-bye. Those of you who won the award, send me a hi to redeem your prize. Yes. <laughs>